One of the biggest problems investors face, one of the biggest factors in why the average American faces a retirement savings crisis is what I call the cookie cutter investment plan. You see this every time you turn on the TV or visit an investing blog and you probably don't even know it. But it's there and it's the reason investors lose money and miss their investing goals. It's the idea that investing is the same for everyone regardless of age or goals. That investing is about having a 50-50 split of stocks and bonds or just picking good investments. This video is going to change the way you think about investing. I'm going to show you exactly how to match your investments according to your age and your needs to break free of this one size fits all myth. Joseph Hogue here with another video on the Let's Talk Money channel. I want to give a shout out to all our subscribers. Great to have you here. Uh, to those new to the channel, thank you for spending a part of your day with me. Please click the subscribe button. We'd love to have you in the community. Today's video goes to the very heart of one of the biggest problems in investing, that all you see is this one size fits all cookie cutter investing strategy. Even if people on TV aren't talking about just picking stocks, even when they're talking about how much you invest in, in those broad groups of assets like stocks, bonds, and real estate, it's never to give you customized advice. It's always to share this very generic advice for everyone that really helps no one. The truth is that your investments should change as you get older, so a simple 50-50 portfolio of stocks and bonds or any other generic advice isn't going to work. Younger investors have decades to go and can survive the ups and downs of the stock market. They might not have as much saved or be able to save as much, and they need those higher returns to help grow their nest egg. Older investors, especially those getting very close to retirement, need to start shifting towards safer investments to make sure their money is there when they need it. I'm going to bet you that for every retiree today with a comfortable income, there are five others in poverty because they had all their money in stocks just before the 2008 crash. So I'm going to walk you through five example portfolios for investors in every decade of life from their 20s through 60s. We're going to look at basic ideas of how much to have in stocks, bonds, real estate, and even some alternative investments. This is all from a series I did on My Stock Market Basics detailing each step, so check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's going to go a lot further into the details of what we're talking about here and exactly how you can customize your investing plan to meet your needs. First, we start with the investor in their 20s. Here, your tolerance for risk is likely higher and you don't have to worry about big changes in stock values from one year to the next. Younger investors might have maybe 60% or more of their money in stocks, 10% in real estate, and 15% in bonds. Uh, these other assets will be things like peer-to-peer -peer loan investments and maybe real estate crowdfunding. So a little more risky, but that provide higher returns. Using historical averages for these assets, you can expect an annual return between 6 to 8% from this kind of a portfolio. As you enter your 30s, you're making more money and can start saving a little more. You've started a family and have other worries, so you don't want to have to worry about your investments as well. Maybe you shift a little out of stocks and into bonds, but you still have more than half of your money in stocks and high return assets like real estate and alternatives. The investor in their 40s still has decades before retirement, so there might not be much of a change, but you're, maybe you're starting to shift from these high risk alternative assets into the safety and inflation protection of real estate. You still probably don't need more than 5% of your money of cash, especially if you've got an emergency fund. Uh, even with this less risky portfolio, you can still earn a solid 6 or 7% annually. As you enter your 50s, now is the time to start pulling back on risk and enjoying the work your money has done over the last decade. You've still got a decade to go before retirement, but start creating that habit of shifting to safer assets. It's time to reevaluate your retirement goals to make sure you're on track as well. By now, you've reduced your alternative investments to maybe 5%, and increase the money in bonds to up to 25%. By your 60s, you'll be able to sit back and rest easy with the confidence that your money is safe and will be there when you need it. You still need some money in stocks for growth and to beat inflation, but at least a third or more should be in fixed income that's going to provide that safety and eventually cash flow. Here you might consider increasing the amount of cash you hold for those what-if and emergency situations. Understand that these are still broad averages as well. Your own tolerance for risk, how much you need to save, and other factors are going to help customize your investing plan perfectly to fit your goals. 
so make sure you click through the link to in the description for that series on age-based investing. We're here Monday through Wednesday with new videos on beating debt, making money, and making your money work for you. So don't forget to click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss a video. If you've got a money question, subscribe and go to mystockmarketbasics.com ask and I'll answer it in a future video.